Hello and welcome back to the Mets Matters Podcast, episode 12. I'm Justin Fried. I'm Josh Mengelstein. And we are back in the comfort of my bedroom. Very nice. Uh, you see this poster right up here. Once again, we pointed out last time, this time it's topical. That is Johan Santana celebrating his no-hitter. It is the six-year anniversary. Six year? No. Is this six years? Yes. It's been six years, right? 2012, 2018. Six-year anniversary of uh, his no-hitter. And, I mean, I was watching that game live. I'm sure you were. Actually, uh, were you believe not? it or not, I was not. Oh, my God. I did not – because I was already wow. out and I couldn't get back in time. I kept getting notifications on my phone that there was a no-hitter going on. I feel like you told me this. And what kind of a Mets fan are you? I think I made it back right after the last out. So you got so to see I the watched, I watched the highlights. You got to see the dude running on the yeah. field and celebrating with him. I've seen I've seen a lot of the highlights of it, though. I know, I know sure. a lot you know, of it. He knows but, what's going on. But – I did not get the experience. Unfortunately not. So yeah, this this you know, something tells me it was never going to happen with me watching it. Oh, so you don't have that kind of power. You're not that yeah. special. Neither am I. So no, no one's special. I mean, everyone's special, but the more you know. All right. Just, <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, this, got, this that got very depressing. This, no, very we're cool. all special in our own ways, some more than others, and in different ways. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so this episode is dedicated to, I guess, Johan Santana. Dedicated, yeah, we'll dedicate him. Um, and just remember, remembering uh, his fantastic performance, the only no-hitter in Mets history, and it very well might have ruined his career, but he'll forever be known as, well, at least the first Met to throw a no-hitter. Who knows if it'll be the only, but uh, for right now, he's the only. But yeah. Hopefully, there will be another. Hopefully, there will be another, yeah. And maybe but, I'll get to watch it this time. <laughs> maybe, but yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, this is episode 12, June 1st, uh, again, recording from my nice little bedroom. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot has happened since we last talked. It's been a week, but this time we luckily didn't take a week off. Um, yeah, we went, I think, two and six since we last talked. Lost three or four to the Brewers. That was great. Split with the Braves, even though we probably should have done better in that series. Um, yes. Injuries have happened. Um, we'll get into all that. We'll game talk about... over 500 currently. Mm-hmm. Are we 20 game over 500? 20 and 20. You're right. Um, yeah, so we can talk and about... about... And I believe... Five games out of first, something like that. The something three of the, like that, yeah. the the Nationals, Braves, Phillies, like in that order. Yeah, all Nationals. Like yeah, Nationals moved up to first because yeah. we beat the Braves actually it's in okay. one of the games. That's okay. We, we gained up yeah. a game on the Braves. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, we can talk about all that first. I just want to mention how uh, how funny it was the uh, the the City Field fire happening at the exact right time as soon as yeah. the like everything was going on with the with the synagogue injury the uh the steven matz injury again we'll talk about both of those um just for the the city field a small portion of it to, to go up in flames i think i was yeah. very indicative of the uh of the Mets season so far yeah that, that's what it feels like yeah it was funny. just everything yeah. burning to ashes exactly all the jokes um you know the mets are a dumpster fire as is their stadium um all the jokes that this is the hottest the mets have been since the first three weeks of the season, you know, all of them, all of them coming out. They're great. They're really great. They made it for and some nice And they really memes. just hurt my feelings. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I take, I, I take personal heat for it. You know, not, no pun intended listen, with we're, that. We're used to it. I'm, I'm a Mets and a Jets fan. You're a, you're a Mets fan. You're a Nets fan. Like yeah. we're used to, you know, the jokes. Brooklyn Nets finally get their first round pick for the first time in eight, six years. There you go. Next year. There you go. Not this See, year, next year. The Cleveland that. Cavaliers have our first rounder this yeah, year. At least, at least the Mets didn't butt fumble. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's okay. I'm the Jets thing back there. Yeah, I'm a Jets fan. Uh, but, yeah. So, anyway, figured that was funny. Started off with that. But now, let's get into the substance. Let's talk about what matters, because this is Mets Matters, right? Talk about the Mets, and they mattered us. So, uh, let's talk about the lineup, right? I mean, we talked about that a good amount last episode and the struggles of, of our hitting and really how, as Drupal Cabrera and maybe even Brandon Nemo were the only ones hitting a little bit. Conforto has been picking it up. But um, as of late, we got the uh, the new arrival of Jose Batista, yeah. who's been really good. We talked about him very briefly last episode, uh, but now he's picked it up. And, you know, what are, you, what are yeah. your thoughts on the new lineup Research. Uh, the the lineup's been the lineup has been good. Of course, it started hitting once the pitching went mm-hmm. down. And Sign of a great team. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, Nimmo has just been fantastic. He's all star worthy at this point. He definitely, mm-hmm. if he keeps this up, he's definitely in the all star game conversation. I'd have to think. Absolutely. Uh, Rosario has really picked it up the last couple weeks, and him and Nimmo have actually been a very good duo, nine and one. It's really worked out, although now Callaway has moved him up in the order, so we'll see how Rosario does this time. 
he, you know, for a while, I guess this is the test. Can Rosario do anything besides hit ninth? That That's really, it's a test for him. So, I mean, all power to him. Try it out. I mean, I do, as much as I like the Rosario Nimmo thing, I would like to think that our so-called top hitting prospect at one point can, uh, can hit somewhere else besides the last spot in the lineup, especially in a lineup that kind of needs another producer. You would hope. Um, Conforto has been hitting again. I'm really not worried about him. He's driving the ball. He's, I mean, it's not, his average overall is not taken uh, kindly still. It's still around 240-ish. But, I mean, the power's back. He hit two home runs, uh, hit home runs back-to-back days, and then hit a double that almost went out against Mm -hmm. Milwaukee. Uh, I think Conforto's fine. I'm not really worried about him. Bruce has been dreadful regardless. No way, no way to really slice that one. Cabrera has been the most consistent player on this team. Uh-huh. And uh, mezzarocco has been great out of the catcher spot. He's been a pleasant surprise. I've been very surprised yes. and happy with him, Devin yes. Mezzarocco. Wilmer Flores was doing well until he got hurt, unfortunately for everyone. Another one, yep. Uh, Cespedes should be back in the next week or so. Frazier should be back in the next couple days, which will help the lineup immensely, especially against lefties, which they've been absolutely dreadful against this season. Of course, not in time to face two lefties Saturday and Sunday, but Jose Batista has been really helping with that Mm -hmm. hitting wise. I have, I don't, I didn't, I don't personally like the guy, you know, just from some of the stuff he's done. I don't, I don't like, I hated that thing he did with Toronto where he refused to sign. He basically told them I'm not taking any cheap money, even though, and his request was five years, one hundred fifty million dollars at the age of thirty-four. And now he's on a minor league deal. And now he or barely got a he, he got dig, he did get a major barely league got a major league deal yeah. with the New York Mets. So I mean, I that, know, that was the whole thing. I guess that's kind of like uh, you've been served type of thing for him. <laughs> yeah. But that was the whole thing with the uh, the Rude Neto door thing. Yeah. It, yeah. I think everyone still finds no, that, that a little bit fun. funny. That that was kind of that was good. But uh, I mean, he's been great so far. I'm no complaints yet. He hasn't done or said anything that's annoyed anyone i don't think uh guillorme's had some pretty good games in the time jose reyes still is probably the worst yeah. eh, worst reyes, utility bruce. infielder reyes bruce ever. the worst player in our lineup even though reyes isn't playing no reyes game. is by far the worst but let's, let's be real reyes you're, is by, you're right but jay I, bruce I, is more overpaid probably so but we, we reyes is more from bruce that's yes. probably what it is but right but if you want to talk about actual performance reyes is by far the worst performer of the entire roster yeah. Pilecki's back is the backup, which should help a lot on days Mezzarocco can't play, which there will be a lot of them since he has an injury history. So mm-hmm. having Ploiecki and Mezzarocco, I think we might actually see something similar to the darno Ploiecki platoon we were hoping to see at the beginning. Mezzarocco just taking the place of Darno at that point. I'm okay with that. Jose Lobaton, recalled today. He was just recalled, As That's the right. fourth bench player since we've been playing so with three for the last So we're carrying four, three catchers. Two or three games. Despite all of our troubles, a catcher yeah. is carrying three And catchers. Kevin Ploiecki will be trying for first base tomorrow night. Of course, I get to get the pleasure of going to that there game you go. to see Kevin yeah. Pilecki's yeah, first base tickets. debut. They're free tickets. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Pilecki is a... I mean, I, it, the the idea is not terrible because they need a right-handed hitter to face a le- to face left-handers, and Pilecki is a righty. I just don't like that Lobatone came up as... It, it was an excuse I mean, to call up Jose Lobatone. That we were talking not, about this before. The reason they probably did that is just because, like, they gave him a 40 minute roster spot, and now if they, like, they don't... Yeah, have I don't think they care option. enough about it. They don't it's have to like, waste an option on someone else. Once they're ready to send him back down, they're just DFA. kind of the same thing That's of it. the reason they called up Scott Copeland, is because they don't really care exactly. if they lose him. No, like, nobody's going to claim him, and even if they did, who cares? It's not yeah. a deal. Exactly. With, but, with, with Honestly, Lobotone might as well just have infinite options. Just continuously add him in a 40-man and DFA him. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on the lineup? I mean, I'm, you've twi- <laughs> twisted it around. I, like I, it. I would like to know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm going to regurgitate a lot of the yeah. same stuff that you just said. But Conforto, absolutely, I think we could start with him. Uh, he's really picked it up, the batting average. The OBP has been there since pretty much since the beginning of the year, but now he's really looking more comfortable at the plate, yes. and I like that a lot. Of course, Brennan Nemo just makes me so happy every time I see him come up. Like, Brennan Nemo... Well, he's just electric in that. He is, and he just makes... and he we, I, one The happiness thing, he one shows One thing we can is, talk about, um, how effective he's been as, as a leadoff hitter just with his all-mix energy in terms of walking, getting hit. He get he gets hit by a pitch more than anyone else on the team, like by yeah. far, maybe more than anyone else in the majors. Yeah, I, that's partially as a result of leaning in. I'm pretty it is, sure, it is, and but my, I'll take it. My favorite it, thing, he's our Brandon Geyer. 
Exactly. I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't yeah, know if yeah, you've yeah. heard. He had like 15 hit by pitches last it's crazy. year. It's cra- and Nemo already has seven though, which makes me think it might actually get close to that. He's on pace. My favorite thing when when Nemo gets hit by a pitch is that he like gets he hit. throws the bat. He throws his bat yeah. so excitedly. But the other day I remember I, I forget. I think he got hit hard. He got hit really hard. He just like put the bat. No, he threw his bat. He threw his bat like really excited, and then they showed his face. He's like grimacing in pain as he's like going down. So he's not as happy then. Yeah. Nemo's great. Uh, Rosario has been picking it up, and I, yeah. I, we need to see him do more like, yes. in other parts of the lineup. And maybe you talked about like the Rosario to Nemo back to back. I think the I dream think... would be to flip flop exactly. and have Rosario go second. Exactly, that's what he, that... exactly what I was gonna say. Nemo one, Rosario two. That is a dream. And then right you there. put Conforto third, Cespedes Conforto. fourth, and then you really have something cooking yeah. at the top. That and would... Cabrera five or whatever you're gonna do. Like yeah. that is that is a really good. Top five right there. But that, obviously, that's I mean, the dream. Yeah. Uh, we need to get there. But well, there you go. Phone ring. I don't know if you hear that on the, yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> I don't think they could have. Well, now, just that, now you're just putting up for no reason. Go. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I mean, I, I really like um, what Nimmo's been doing, obviously, what Conforto's doing. Cabrera is still maybe our most productive hitter. He had two home runs a couple nights ago, which was great. Um, and Jose Batista's picking it up. And he's yeah. he's actually given us something when we, we didn't think there was anything there. We've gotten stuff from Batista and Mezzarocco that we didn't expect to get nearly the production we've gotten. And that, those are both pleasant surprises. So far, I so far the, for in-season acquisition purposes, Sandy Alderson has an A-plus so nice. far for in-season acquisitions. <laughs> for po- for off-season acquisitions, the only one I've liked so far is Todd Frazier, really. Yeah. Well, Swarzak, you know, he's barely, he's not even pitching. Vargas right. apparently pitches good every other Vargas. outing now. You know what? This could be a great segue. Let's yeah. start talking about the, uh, his, well, his actually, pitch. first, oh, I, 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 I would like to talk about the David Wright uh, oh, news. Yes. He, David Wright had started baseball activities yesterday. He's very light baseball activities. It was literally just having a catch. Yeah. But at the same it's time, activities. it's, it's a small step in the right direction. And it opens the door again for a possible return, which is, I as a Met fan, I couldn't be any happier to see the idea of that. I, I'm just, I it angers me when I see these people on Twitter and all of that, you know, saying that stuff he like like he should retire. Yeah. He's 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 a, you know, he's not lived up to the contract. He's 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 a, he, you know, he he doesn't deserve to be paid this much. He should go away. But the real like. Here's the thing. You want to have an issue with the, you know, like they, the people, the biggest argument is that the Mets won't spend because David Wright's still there. Do not blame that on David Wright. If you want to blame that on anyone, blame that on the Wilpons. I, listen, I'm fine with the way they spent this offseason personally. What they did was not, was not, was, was fair considering what I expected. Mm-hmm. I expected them to spend a lot less, so I was happy when I saw 150 as the payroll. But, I would like to see them spend more. They better do more if they're still in contention middle of the season, and a, a lot more at that. But, uh, Dave, you know, David Wright is, is not the reason for that. If he, you know, not. they both parties sign it. When both parties sign a contract, blame – if you want to blame one of them for not spending, don't blame the one who signed it as the player. The, it's the You think David Wright is trying to hurt the franchise? No, it's – it's blame the Wilpons if, if you want to blame anyone. Because they're the ones not spending the money. I think what you're seeing is just the irrational anger sports yeah. fan. Like sports, a lot, a lot of sports fans just they don't really like consider, yeah. um, you know, I, I guess injuries and you know they, they don't consider humans and players. They just you know treat them as just pawns and yeah. stuff like that. Like you have the Mets. They they're paying a lot of money to Cespedes, who's battled a lot of injuries since it, you know since signing the the four year contract, yeah. whatever it was. Um, then you have Wright, who's obviously had a lot of injuries and yeah. it's really ruined his career. People are just upset, and it's not, you know, it's not. It doesn't justify them coming out and saying, "Oh, you know, David Wright should retire. This is his fault." I mean, I understand yeah. where they're coming from, but you know, you're that, you're gonna get that all. The that time. being That's... said, I do want to defend the Wilpons a little bit with that because because uh, people are starting to now with like now that the Mets are playing bad again, people, you know, or they've been mediocre at least the last few weeks. People are starting to say like, "Oh, it's you know." Sell the team again. I and I think that that's ridiculous. To listen, what's happened to this team is a bunch of injuries. Let's not blame that on the Will Ponds themselves. I, I like that's. Listen, they, you you can complain about how they spend money. They're very frugal when there it comes. Are plenty of things I mean, to blame the Will yeah, for. <laughs> but I think what's happened with this team, this team on paper is a lot better than they've shown. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna turn around and make this about the Will Ponds. The fact is, the players. 
have not performed this year that they thought were better than they are. Uh, they've been showing so far, yeah. at least. So until they produce, I cannot look at the Will Ponds and say, oh, you should have spent more. It, now, if they all start producing and you see that there's a glaring hole that that they just didn't address, that's another thing to complain about. But don't complain about, you know, don't complain that they didn't predict that there were going to be 15 injuries on this team already. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, they might as well have, like, they probably should have predicted, like, not, like, obviously, uh, yeah. like, serious, but they could have predicted that, yeah. like, after the last couple seasons. It's, and it's, you can't even blame the training staff. Yeah. We're talking about the four. Yeah, I mean, it has they nothing to do with the training staff. It's just sheer luck. In fact, they've point. actually been better, you could argue, this year, because the fact is, most of these DL stints have been a lot shorter than they yeah. have been in the past. I mean, think about it. It's Jacob DeGrom missed one start from an injury that probably months, last year, he would have missed two months for. Might have. Um... Noah Syndergaard, we got a real big scare when he went on the DL the other day. He's coming back probably after one missed start. Hopefully. And, I mean... And Steven, I, Ma Steven Matz. Steven Matz missing, miss a start. didn't even miss a start. He's Hopefully. probably going to pitch, pitch on Sunday. Hopefully. And, I I mean, I think... Knock on wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood se segment. Every week. But, uh... Anyways, moving on to the pitching now. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll say it's a good segue. We could, you know, we're talking about the injuries in pitching. Yeah. Um, of course, that has absolutely had a, a major impact on both our rotation and our bullpen. Um, just yesterday or two days ago, whatever it would be, yeah, yesterday actually, um, our bullpen consisted of names like Buddy Bauman, Scott Copeland, and this isn't this isn't to you know um, to you know, I guess insult any of these players, of course. But if you're listing a major league bullpen and you have names like Buddy Bauman. Tim Peterson, Scott Copeland, Garrison Batista. Those are four of your relievers. There's a major problem. Yeah. There's a there's a major problem with that. And Agreed. the Mets did just DFA uh, Scott Copeland. But Buddy Bauman's not good. Yeah. I'm intrigued by Tim Peterson. Need to see more. He doesn't have great stuff. I'm intrigued but he by could him. Pitch. He looked like he could pitch. Batista's not ready for the majors. He's got great stuff, yeah. but he's not ready for the majors. 100 mile an hour fastball, but it's, yeah, he needs to harness the other pitches. That he yeah. Throws. I, yeah. I literally saw him go fastball seven pitches in a row the other day, and I think it's because he doesn't have a good off speed. He pitch. doesn't, and he doesn't have good control on the fastball. Yeah. Like he he needs a lot of seasoning and a lot yes. of development, and he'll get it hopefully in yeah. the minors. He will hopefully get he it. He has the tools to hopefully. be to be a real good. And reliever. we've said that a lot. We said it yes. about Hazel Robles. We'll see. Hopefully. Yeah, but like Robles, he's weird. I, I gotta say about Robles because there are some. It's a weird dude. I started to notice actually, and so people on Twitter were talking about this uh, at metsdaddy.com. If you want to check them out, he was He's he was talking. The guy, times. the guy who started that, was talking about that, and he was saying that, and it's a good point. He tends to do well when they're behind, like as in a mop up role. He actually like usually like is shut out. He can't do it. But pressure. he just, but. It's not even. I'm not even gonna say he can't deal with pressure because it's usually just one bad pitch he makes. Think about it. Think about how many times. Um, think about the amount of home runs he allows compared to the runs. I mean, it's usually always a home run. It's also a lot of. He doesn't. He doesn't. He, gets a, he, does, he, gets he doesn't walk walks. a lot of people anymore. He used to. It, that used to be his big issue. He doesn't walk a lot anymore. And now he just leaves a straight fan. Now he just leaves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it's right. for the. I'm not saying it's for the better. I'm just saying that yeah. I've noticed he doesn't walk as much, and it makes me think that like you know. He, what I've come to expect with him is either absolute perfection or absolute garbage. It's yeah. one or the other. There's no in between. Really. I feel like it's more often than not garbage. But there's some. There's some there are times there. where he like comes in with the, the bases loaded and he'll strike out three guys in a row. And it, I just, and, and it makes no sense. And it's like, man, this guy could be a closer, and then yeah. he'll just blow a three run lead in the yeah. seventh and just. Then he'll like, yeah, it, it'll be like a bunch of singles up. in a row, and exactly. then. And that, yeah, and then my it's a da, mess. You know, my dad. My dad is a name for the the uh, good and bad Hansel Robles. He says Hansel, Ro Hansel and Gretel. So <laughs> I um, like it. Shout I like out it. to my dad with the creative dad jokes. Um, but yeah, yeah no. <laughs> so obviously bullpen, massive, um, massive hole right there. There's a big, big, big hole. And Seth Lugo, who was one of our our best pitchers yes. in the pen, has now been forced into rotation yes. at least for the time being because of injuries to center guard. And Matt's hopefully won't miss a start. Um, so hopefully not not that, but of course the injury to Syndergaard has yeah. forced Lugo in the starting rotation. He did fine. In Four his first shot game. innings. I mean, um, better yeah. than fine. It was yeah. very good. He was on a pitch they, limit, unfortunately. Pitch, well, yeah, because he's been in no. the bullpen. And for it's a understandable. While. It's understandable. It was a necessary and pitch. Of course, limit. but then you give the bullpen five innings to pitch, and it, yeah. It well, I mean, this is the take back that's going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. by putting Lugo on the rotation, you are weakening the bullpen yeah but at the same time part of the reason they're able to do that or they feel comfortable enough to do it is because anthony swarzak should be back hopefully by the start of the baltimore orioles series they're hoping 
which should help a lot with the bullpen. How they, long is Ramos supposed to be out for? Ramos, not that he's good. Not, anyway, yeah, uh, no <laughs> one knows. I, some people think they just put him on the DL to like Maybe. get rid of him. That, and, talk about that's a guy who, yeah. who walks batters. Yeah, like he. He'll come in every like well, almost he, every every time yeah. he comes in, he just walks the first batter. He's not giving himself a chance right now. That's the problem. He, like Dave Island said, and it's true. When you don't when you don't throw pitches in the strike zone, you're not even giving yourself a chance to win yeah. because you're just gonna walk the guys anyways. So it doesn't give you any shot to do anything. Um, Gazelman still very good in the pen. They're probably overworked he at this stage, but day. he got saved the other day. That was good. Familia has been. Fine, I'm not. I'll, he's blown saves, but I mean, out of everything to be concerned about, yeah. Jerry Smith is one of the least. Things yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, listen, he's not the perfect closer, but he's not like I, I hate the the ideology that some people have that he's like this dreadful like closer. He his ERA happens to be the best it's been in his tenure. They expect, so, they expect Mariano yeah. Rivera or Trevor Hoffman. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you're not gonna get that, and I mean, like, I guess it goes to show you like the looking across the sot looking across the city to know, the Yankees just... where they have a role as Chapman, David Robertson and Dylan Patances. Although Patances has not really been that great this year. So we have but... Jared Similia, Robert Gazelman and Buddy Bauman. Yeah. <laughs> or Seth yeah. Lugo if you want to throw him in there. No. Buddy Bauman and Seth Lugo. Yeah, but I mean I... Buddy Bauman. But Buddy Bauman, if you ever want to the, come on the show, the question... we'd love to have you. The, the, the question the question I have though about Lugo to the rotation and it's not really one people are discussing yet, I guess because it's not a, an issue to this point. If Lugo has another good start, do you bump someone else from the rotation to keep him? It depends. I think I think you do it. I think Vargas has been pitching well enough, actually, the last except for the the outing in the middle was I, bad. I need but he's more had two of yes, I do. But but two out of three he, he's earned starts. himself another start yes. at the very least. Yes. At the very least. He has, of course. You Probably two out. more starts. You can't take him out of the rotation yes. at the last outing. Yes. Can't. But the one you can do that for yeah. is Wheeler. Yeah. He's been very inconsistent basically the whole season. And I, I don't know. I mean, it's a, really a tough decision because the thing with Wheeler that's different from Vargas, if Vargas goes to the bullpen, that's not for a beneficial thing. That's because he's so bad in the rotation that you have to stick him there. The thing with Wheeler is he might actually be able to pull off the Seth Lugo role in the pen. And that's really something to consider. Well, we've, I mean, been, we've been talking about that yes. for years because Wheeler struggles yeah. deep in the games, so and, he would be suited for a and know, I mean, two to three inning reliever type. I mean, I mean, the thing is, with Swarzak back too, that also has already fortified the bullpen a little bit more. But you, you know, you could just do the easy thing and put Lugo back there, but then you risk the rotation being bad because Zach Wheeler's pitching not so well. Yeah. But if you put if you do the reverse and you put Wheeler in the pen, there's a shot you could get the best of both worlds with it. Good. You could get you could get the reliever you need, and you could also f- fill out the starting rotation if Vargas continues to pitch well. Therefore, you'd have a rotation of Degrom, Syndergaard, Matz, who's looked a lot better the last few weeks, and mm-hmm. and he actually looks like he's turning a corner. Hopefully, the health thing doesn't hurt him. Although I don't think what he has is something that should hurt him long term. Hopefully not. It's a, small it's a finger, strained it? finger. Yeah. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, if Vargas keeps pitching like a four, if Vargas can pitch like a four, that would be good enough. That's fantastic. Um, what is he at right now? He's over yeah. 10 still, right? And I mean, I think, Lu- you know, I've always said this, that Lugo, I really think can do either role perfectly mm-hmm. fine. And actually, he might be very effective as a starter still. I He has four pitches. It's not like he's some guy they're just testing out there he's done it before he's been very effective which is why he's better suited for the rotation than gazelman yeah well yes gazelman i think is bullpen i think the thing with gazelman is the disparity between him as a starter and him as a reliever has been so different yeah and i think that's the thing with him that's why lugo to me was always the ideal candidate if you were going to move back to the rotation Mm -hmm. because i think he's been effective in both roles at times and he has the stuff to continue doing that. I think a lot of it depends on how Swarzak does when he comes back. If Swarzak starts pitching really yeah. good, then you can afford to have Lugo in the ball in the in the rotation, and you could move Wheeler or whoever it's going to be if Vargas yeah. starts. If Vargas implodes, you can move to the pen. Yeah. But if Swarzak struggles, 
I think you need Lugo I, pen. I think you need him. I there think so. One. I think what you need to hope. I think Swarzak will be fine. I'm not really worried about him once Hopefully, he gets back. I, I, I don't know he wasn't pitching point. bad before he got down. He only pitched two games. What he had an oblique injury, right? Yeah, yeah, and it kept him out for a while. I mean, I don't worry about him once he gets back. The th- the th- question is, what is more important? The can you replace? Can Wheeler might actually be able to do the job if Lugo has another good start and Wheeler pitches really bad in his next outing? Yeah, I think you have to make the switch. I think I think you might have to try it out, see what happens. Maybe. It like it's it's worth the gamble at that point. I think when is Wheeler's next start supposed to be? Wheeler is going to be starting Sunday. Okay. What I would do? Actually, no. no wait, no. no he starts is- tonight. He's starting tonight. Okay, then what yes. I would do, what I would do is I'd give Wheeler another start after tonight. I if, even if he even if he does terrible. I'd well, give, I think he get start. he'll get one regardless. Yeah, so. I would wait until Swarzak comes back. Give Swarzak two or three outings, see how he does. If he pitches fine, if he gives up one run in three outings, even two runs, great. Yeah. As long as he doesn't implode. Yeah. As long as it looks like it's just some minor stuff exactly. that he'll as long as he, to tweak. As long as he looks like a capable, good, even like mid to back end reliever. Great. You could keep Lugo if you want in a rotation. But I think if he implodes, if he starts doing bad... Well, I mean, if, he, if he's bad, then they might have no choice. Then Lugo has one, to stay in the bullpen. He has to, because but, you need to solidify the bullpen. But if this, but here's here's the, the thing that, like, you, you have to keep in mind. The bullpen and the rotation effectively impact each hand. other. So Absolutely. let's say you keep Wheeler in the pen and you move Lugo back to the... Uh, you, I mean, you keep Wheeler in the rotation and move Lugo out, back to the pen. If Wheeler keeps pitching bad, the bullpen will start going bad. But yes. at the same time, if but if you keep Lugo in the rotation and he starts pitching well, then the bullpen gets enhanced by that. Well, it's a catch twenty. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it, that's we the thing. We it's, can't win out like we. Yeah. we can't have both a really good rotation and a really good bullpen. If we were, then yeah. Then I mean, I, I like yeah. let's see what Wheeler does. That that's really what it's going to come down to. But if if Lugo pitches anything close to what he did in his first outing, we also need to see and, him and pitch, well, pitches deep. I mean, doing yeah. that. I, well, if he goes six, seven innings, still gonna, you think he's still going to be on a pitch limit next game? Probably. Uh, it'll be a much less enforced it one. Like it'll be like nine. It'll be like ninety next game instead of sixty. Or whatever yeah, was, right? he went. To, I think he went to like sixty-two. Something Unless like it's that. like eighty to ninety, it'd probably be more like eighty to ninety. But if he can yeah. go five, if he can go six innings. Well, well, six innings, I think you have to keep him. Because yeah, the fact is, perfect. the only people that have been able to go six innings with any sort of consistency DeGrom of late, Syndergaard. DeGrom, Syndergaard, and Matt's has started to be able to do it when he's... He could have done it last game. He would have done it last game, I'm he pretty could, confident. Oh, he pretty confident. He was but Matt's he has was a tendency dealing. to run into, one, like run into trouble one inning and just collapse. So yes. You can never say with certainty. All right, he usually... He gets to five, though. Which, I, Wheeler yeah. does not always get to five, which that's a problem. It is. And Vargas has not been consistent with that either. He's even gotten past five, Vargas. No, but last yeah. game he probably should have been allowed to, but he, Callaway, like Callaway decided pitches. to pull him way too quickly. Wasn't it seventy something pitches they took him out? He had like seventy pitches, and they decided to take him out after the fifth. I don't get and that. he was dealing too. With it our was, bullpen the way it is. It was the best performance I've seen from Vargas. Like, so I don't blame. It worked. It actually they, they did, did win that game. I don't blame Mickey Callaway for the bullpen because it's hard to blame him when you're throwing out guys like Buddy Bowman and Garrison yeah. Batista at this point, but. You know, with something like that, like you gotta let. I, I, I'm always one to let your starters pitch. And if a guy has 85, 90 pitches, you throw him back out there again. Even if you, he has Vargas was visibly pitched. If he has 95, pitched. if you have 95 pitches and you're not showing signs of tiring and you're dealing, you're throwing him back out there. I know that's maybe not today's baseball as much, but that's that's my that's my philosophy on it. If he gets into trouble, that's different. If he's showing signs of tiring, also different. I'm not saying if a guy is 105. I think it. I think it also there. depends on the team in general. You know, if you have a bad bullpen, then you then well, you, I'm talking then about you this force team. it. Well, with this team, this team well, this team, Jacob Degrom at this point, I'd push as much as he's able. Degrom, to do. I'm fine letting him throw but 110 pitches. Like I'm I, fine with that. I wouldn't have let Vargas go to like. A hundred, but I would have let him go another two innings. Well, it depends probably. on the scenario as well. I would have let him try to do another two innings Agreed. if he could have. But I mean, I wasn't gonna. I mean, I would. I probably would have pulled him early just to keep his confidence up, yeah. but not that early, especially after a doubleheader when they needed innings. I mean that. I mean after a double after a week where we saw the bullpen employed Agreed. multiple times, we needed innings. I mean it worked. Luckily for him, it worked. It did, but. It was a very risky thing. I'm that just, could have went so haywire. I'm just that, sick of them taking out – I mean, usually he lets the Grom go, but I'm sick of them taking out the Grom at, at some point and then having a bullpen blow it. Like, that has happened 
Well, five times now. I mean, it, he pitched seven happened. innings and the bullpen couldn't get it done the other day. Lugo actually blew that. He game, did. That was, un, that which, was uncharacteristic. Which was very uncharacteristic, which is why I can't even get mad at the guy. Because I'm not. Yeah, I'm not mad at he's been, for Lugo playing. and Gazelman have. Well, no, I actually do blame Callaway for that. What was because uh, he did pitches? No, it's not because of what he did with that. Lugo should have been in the eighth inning. Right. My gripe with it was that he that he didn't pull him for the ninth after he gave up a That's run. Right. He kept and he him kept in him, him right. in. It's knowing he was pitching poorly. I didn't and he didn't go game. to his closer, Juris Familia, who's proven time and time again how good of a reliever he is. And then when asked about it after the game, says said that that was planned out that Lugo was going to pitch two innings. I hope he doesn't – he realizes you can't plan out your bullpen no, you from can't. the start of a game. He said Jake was going to go seven – Lugo was going to pitch the last two. That is an awful, awful strategy. I completely agree. You can't do that. I didn't know. I see. I didn't watch that game. I just heard about Especially Lugo. with a one-run lead. I mean, that. I mean, it's they bad. took the – they had a one-run lead. Lugo gave it gave it back. And then in the top of the inning, Mezzarocco, it's a home run, and you leave him in. I don't care how that much is, you trust Seth Lugo. You can't throw a guy out there and then have him get hit and then be like, well, the plan was to have him pitch another inning, so we're just going to throw him out there again. Like, yeah. No, you have you to evaluate the game as it goes. Mm-hmm, you exactly. can't just make a plan. I mean, listen, you could have a tentative plan in your head about about how you want to go about it, but don't you can't execute it like it's a planned strategy. Like you came in knowing what you were going to do. It's not like a nine to five shift. You know, you're coming in at nine, leaving at five. You have to play it by how things look. How you have to evaluate so, the game with your eyes, so not that, just if with that was the head. Case, if that was the case, and Jacob Degrom had eighty pitches through seven, would they have not thrown him out there for the eighth? Yeah, I mean that, that that's the thing. Me? Like I like I I don't even know what their strategy was. I really don't. If and that, yeah, exactly. Like, it scares like, me actually that what that, that that's something he thought about. That, listen, it's a learning experience. I expected a learning curve with Mickey Callaway, which by the way, most Met fans I think did not, which is why. I – I've always had a gripe about them firing Collins with that because, right. well, I, ha- I had a problem with Met fans who criticized Collins and now are criticizing Callaway like they shouldn't have expected this. You have to understand a rookie manager is going to take time to learn. I understand mm-hmm. that. I might not like what he's doing right now, but I understood that when that happened. I wanted Collins personally. I, I personally was fine with keeping Terry Collins I was because I thought if they were going to compete, you don't want a rookie manager on the job. Yeah, and I'm not saying I dislike Callaway or anything like that, but the fact is, you sh- don't sit here and say that you shouldn't have expected something like this to happen. A learning curve should have been expected with a guy who's a 42 year old manager, and has right. never managed a team in his life. He was a pitching coach. He's learning to manage the whole game now. It takes time. I'm not. I don't personally. I have not liked the results so far, but I've also accepted that this is going to be a part of the thing with the curve with him. And he might very well take a season or two to really become the manager they want him to be. Yeah, it's it's quite the learning curve, you know. Yeah, it's, a, lot, a lot goes into managing a major league baseball team, and yeah. I don't think people realize it. And it, yeah, that was for all sports. People just criticize managers and coaches all the time, but yeah. so much goes into it. It's not just what you see on the field. It's not just what you see on the court. It's everything, all game planning and prep and everything. A lot goes into it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean. I think I think that'll pretty much do it. Yeah. You know, I guess uh, shout out once again to the man Johan Santana six yep. years ago today. Uh, I don't know what time the game was. I think it was it was a day game. One of my favorite Mets of all time, and I'm now. Yeah. And I actually share a birthday with him, which is nice. I didn't know yeah, that. I do. Okay. Well, happy March thirteenth. Yeah, happy late birthday to Johan Santana, uh, <laughs> or happy really early one. But yeah, congrats to congrats. I don't know. <laughs> shout out to Johan Santana. Episode was dedicated to you. To your to I don't know, he's not like he's dead he's not dead uh, to just the memory of the no hitter but yeah yes. thank you guys for watching uh, this has been Mets Matters I've been Justin Preen and I'm Josh Finkelstein we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>